Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Lakeside Tee, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description where you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern and all of the supplies you need. To make this pattern, we're using Bernat Softy Cotton and USH 5mm crochet hook. And of course, we'll also need our usual crochet supplies, scissors, a yarn needle, and stitch markers. We're going to be using stitch markers not only to help us mark our stitches with this pattern, but also to help us mark out our seams. Let's take a quick look at the finished Lakeside Tee. The lakeside tee is made of two rectangles that are then seamed along the sides, leaving the armholes open, and along the shoulders, leaving the neck hole open. This creates a really lovely boat neck style with a little bit of a sleeve, more of a, not even quite a cap sleeve, but a little bit of shoulder coverage right there at the top, so you can wear it alone or over another piece. Each of the rectangles, you can see the back of this one here, both of these are made from the bottom up. We start with a little bit of ribbing and then simply work double crochet stripes until we get to the top, add a little bit more ribbing, and then do our seaming. The final step is to add just a little bit of single crochet edging right around the sleeve openings to finish those off. But this beautiful ribbing around the hem and at the top are finished off as they are. All we have to do is seam up those sides. As I say, the middle portion is all simply double crochet. However, let's take a quick look at the written pattern. Here's the PDF for the Lakeside Tee, and I wanted to point out a couple of things. You'll see here, we've got the yardage for the pattern, and it comes in lots of sizes. Extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2X, 3X, 4X, and 5X. And you can see here too, I've also color coded them. This is also in the free version on mooglyblog.com. I've therefore used that same scheme for the colors and the sizes, you can see right here, throughout the pattern. So I've also listed the approximate amounts of how much yarn you'll need of each color if you still wanna stick with two colors, as well as having that sizing information in the written pattern itself. I really in particular want to point out that we make two pieces and they start the same, but then there's a little bit of a change. Sizes extra small, small, large, 2X and 5X have one set of instructions here to take you through row six and through the rest of the body itself until you get to that top edging. However, sizes medium, extra large, 3X and 4X have their own set of instructions that lead you up to that top edging. So basically you make the bottom edging the same for all sizes. Then for the main portion, if you will, the striped portion, we have a different set of instructions depending on size. And then the top edging is all sizes again. We all come together back for that. The reason that we do this is simply because the number of rows required for each size. For example, this here is a medium. So with this one, we have sets of two stripes for each color. And for some of the other sizes, then you have one stripe of the white, then two stripes of yellow, and then two stripes, etc. It's simply because of the number, number of stripes so that you have an opposite or contrast color next to your ribbing. So if you're changing your color scheme, you can play with that a little bit too and really make it your own. I also want to point out that there is an included schematic with the pattern that you'll need for the seaming. You can see here, this is the simple rectangle. We make two front and back, and it's got the measurements for the length and the width. However, when it comes to the seaming, you want to make sure that you leave the right amount of sleeve opening unseamed, as well as the correct amount of neck opening unseamed for your size. The shoulders here have also been given for your convenience, but you can simply measure down and then mark with a stitch marker where you want that seam along the sides to end. And of course, it's the same on both sides and for both shoulders. Now again, we'll need to make two of these pieces, but we're just going to demo one because they're exactly the same. We start both pieces with color A, so whatever color you want your hem and top of your sweater to be, and we're going to start with foundation double crochets. Now, if you'd prefer, you can work a row of double crochets by chaining and working back into the chains in your preferred style, whatever that is. The main thing is to end up with the correct number of stitches for the size you're making. 
You'll also note that for row one, it's always an odd number of stitches. So if you decide to make this a custom size, you'll want to make sure to again, start with an odd number of stitches. To make our foundation double crochet, I like to start with a chain of two, and then I yarn over and go into the first chain I made, the one next to the slip knot. I yarn over and pull up a loop, give that a little tug. I like to make sure all my loops are all the same size. Then I yarn over and pull through just that first loop. This will form the chain at the bottom of our first foundation double crochet. Then I'll yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two to finish it just like a standard double crochet. Then I always like to put a stitch marker in the top of my first stitch. There we go. So now I know when I come back for the next row that that will be the first stitch I made in this row. Then I continue making foundation double crochets to whatever number is required for the size t-shirt that I'm making. So we'll yarn over, we go into the bottom under those two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch, yarn over and pull up our loop, get those loops even again, yarn over and pull through the first one to create the chain at the bottom of the second stitch. I'll get my yarn again there, there we go. Then we yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. So now we've made two foundation double crochets. Let's make one more together. We yarn over, go under the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through that first loop to make the chain at the bottom, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two to finish the stitch. So continue making foundation double crochets or standard double crochets if you prefer to the number required for the size of lakeside tea that you're making. So today I'm going to be demoing on more of a doll sized version. So we're gonna go ahead and stop here. But again, you should check the instructions to crochet the number of stitches for the size you're making. Then we're ready to begin row two. However, before we do that, you'll note that row one is our right side row. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and add a little bit of a stitch marker at the base of those stitches there just to indicate your right side. There we go. Then we're ready to go ahead and begin row two, which will be on the wrong side. We chain one and turn or turn and chain one, however you like to do it. Half double crochet in the first stitch. And then I like to go ahead and always mark the first stitch of each row. It just helps me make sure oop, and maintain my stitch count. There we go. Get our hook back in there. And then what we're going to do is work our repeat that will take us all the way across the rest of the row. We back post double crochet in the next stitch. So we'll yarn over, come from behind, come up on the side of the next post, go to the back of the fabric on the other side of that same post, yarn over and pull our loop up behind that post nice and carefully, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Then we half double crochet in the next stitch. So we won't work into the top of that stitch that we just worked our post stitch around. We want to go to the next stitch to half double crochet. And that's our repeat. Back post double crochet in the next stitch. And half double crochet in the stitch after that. Continue that all the way across finishing with a half double crochet. So this is a mini version of what your row two should look like. And when you've finished that and make sure you end with that half double crochet in that last stitch, then it's time for uh, row three. First, we'll chain one and turn. And then we're going to basically continue our ribbing for one more row. We want to half double crochet in the first stitch. So I'll get my stitch marker moved on up there. This one was in the row below, but I took it out when I worked into that stitch. There we go. And then we begin our repeat for this row, which is front post double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in the stitch after that. So whereas before we worked back post double crochets, we've turned, we want to maintain that ribbing. So now we're going to do front post double crochets. So we yarn over, go in on one side there around that post, Yarn over and pull up our loop and finish our double crochet. Half double crochet in the next stitch should be in another half double crochet. That's how we check to make sure we're all lined up. 
and then just continue that repeat all the way across. Front post double crochet around the next stitch, half double crochet in the stitch after that. So you should finish with a half double crochet again. We're working in even rows for this whole pattern. So the number of stitches you had when you began this pattern or in your row one is the number of stitches you should have in every row throughout. So when you get to the end of row three, rather than finishing with the color you've been using, we're going to want to finish with the next color. So we simply find that end here. Make sure we come in a little bit so we don't accidentally pull it through and yarn over and pull through with our, our next color there. I'm gonna leave that tail nice and long there so it doesn't pull through as we continue working. Now this is the point where the patterns are going to diverge. You're going to follow one set of instructions for extra small, small, large, 2X and 5X, and another set of instructions for medium, XL, 3X and 4X. Basically, the big difference is you'll need to break color A in order to join it from the other side for the first set of instructions, whereas for the other set, you'll be able to carry both colors along one side. So it's simply just, it's gonna matter which side you end up carrying that yarn along. And for one set of instructions, as I say, you'll have to break color A. Otherwise, they're basically the same. We're just working in double crochet rows. So let's go ahead and work row four together. We're going to pull up our loop to the height of a double crochet. I need to make sure I turn here. Make sure I'm working with my yarn attached to the end, end attached to the skein. There we are. And that we've got those ends sort of secured back here. Now row four, we're going to start with a chainless starting double crochet in the first stitch, but we want to make it a front loop only stitch. This whole row is going to be worked in the front loop only. So I'm going to pull up my stitch here to the height of a double crochet, secure that loop on top with my finger, yarn over with that loop itself. And now I want to go under just that front loop. Sometimes I find if I twist my hook and use my hook to sort of pull those loops apart, it's a little bit easier. Oop, I ended up still going under both of them. Let's try that one again. Just wanna go right in between those two loops. There we go. So we get it under just that front loop only, yarn over and pull up that loop, yarn over and pull through that loop and behind the yarn over, and then finally yarn over and pull through those two final loops. To continue across for row four, we're going to be making front loop double crochets in each remaining stitch across. So we yarn over, we make sure we go under just that front loop again, a little bit easier when we're not doing a ch chainless starting double crochet, and we just double crochet in each stitch right on across. Now, when you get to the end of this row, the big difference between the sizes really is whether or not you're going to change colors again after just one row, or if you're going to work another row of white before you change colors again. It's just to really help highlight that hem and make our color scheme work. That's basically the only difference because after this, all our rows until we get to that top edging are all simply worked in double crochet. Not even front loop, double crochet or back loop, simply double crochet. So continue making however many rows you need to make for the body of yours and then finally, all we have left to do is the top hem. So here you can see the finished sweater again. This is the ribbing that we just made. We're actually, we're working from this side, here we go. So there's that ribbing we just made. And then as I say, these are simply rows of double crochet. The number of rows in the exact color layout will depend on the size you're making. But after you've made the rows required for your size, come up here, you should finish with either two rows of your contrast color or one row of your contrast color. Again, just to balance out the different sizes. Then we've just got a repeat of those rows we just made for our top edging. The first row is worked from the wrong side and it's what we were just doing. Front loop only, since we're on the wrong side for that one, front loop only, double crochet all the way across. Then we've got a row of front post double crochet and a row of back post double crochet. Basically what we did at the bottom worked backwards to finish off that very top edge. Same stitches, just repeat it again. Then when you've got your two squares made, it's time to lay them out. You'll want to make sure that the wrong sides are together. You can see right here are those floats that I carried along the inside. So we wanna make sure those are on the inside of our sweater and that our hem with those unused loops from working in that front loop only on the wrong side, we wanna make sure that those are on the outside of our sweater. So after you've got your two rectangles made, we put them wrong side together 
and you can use your stitch markers to pin it out. You want to go back to your schematic and see how much room you want to leave for your armhole. Then you can put a stitch marker there, maybe a different colored one or tie a little bit of extra yarn there. And then you're simply going to seam all along the side, all the way down to the hem. So you can start at the hem and work your way up if you want, or you can start at the top and work your way down, whatever works best for you. For the seaming itself, I use the mattress stitch, but you can use whatever kind of seaming you prefer. After you've seamed the sides, the only thing left to do is seam the shoulders. And this is the same thing. You can go to the schematic and it shows how much to leave open in the middle and how much to seam for each shoulder. And you simply work into those last rows right there. And again, I used the mattress stitch. Now, I will say before you weave in your ends from all this seaming, I recommend that you go ahead and try the sweater on uh, either your recipient or yourself or even on a mannequin if you like, or on your hangers over anything you plan on wearing it over so that you can really adjust and personalize the width of the boat neck and the length of the sleeve uh, armhole. That's something that can be very personal. And if you're custom making a top, you might as well make it truly custom for a truly custom fit. Some people like their boat neck a little closer. Some people like it a little wider. The very final thing after you've finished your seams, you know exactly where you want them to be, is to add that simple single crochet edging. You just work all the way right around that armhole so that it lays nice and flat. It doesn't have to be a specific number of stitches, but I do typically recommend working two stitches into the side of each double crochet row. So you work all the way around that opening and then you can join and simply weave in all those ends and you'll be all finished with your lakeside tee. And that's how to crochet the lakeside tee. Remember, you can find the written pattern free on mooglyblog.com. Simply search Moogly Blog Lakeside Tea. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.